description of C1. First, what we will do is that we will compute all these products uh, A, W, J. Okay. So, first we compute A dot W i for a going from 1 up to n and how many w i is we have i going from 1 to m again i going from 1 up to m okay so we have n m many products and uh, what kind of uh, how do we do this? So, basically this is just a sigma pi circuit. So, we will have a parity gate at the top. Okay. So, let us say that I want to compute A dot W i. I will have a parity gate and I will have how many AND gates? Huh? How many? M many AND gates and each AND gate will take what as input? Huh? So, what is A dot W i? It is just the dot product. How do I compute dot product? Huh? What will we do here? So, basically what, what is it? It is the product of A 1 W i 1, right? So, I will have a 1 and I will have the bit w i 1 over here and I keep on doing this and the last one will take a m w i m right. So, these products will be 1 if both of them are 1 and finally, the parity will be 1 if there is a odd number of such products which are 1 okay. and that is exactly what the what we want. So, this is a sigma pi circuit where the pi gates have <coughs> order 2 and the sigma gate has uh, tan in m. Okay. Right. Now, I can do it over here only. Now, I will compute gates d a k for once again a going from 1 up to n and a going from 1 up to m such that d a k is equal to 1 if and only if x a is equal to 1 and uh, a dot w i is equal to 0 for all i less than or equal to k. Okay. So, I am defining a predicate over here, a predicate d a k. So, d a k is equal to 1, if x a is equal to 1 and a dot w i is equal to 0 for all i up to k and it is equal to 0 otherwise. Okay. So, if one of them is not satisfied, it will be equal to 0. So, how can I compute d a k using these outputs now? Should I keep? Okay, let me just preserve this lemma for the time being. So, 
So what will DAK take as input? It will take XA and but how do I do negation? Exactly. So what I will do is that I will just insert a 1. Okay. So I will maybe dot w1 a dot wk just one okay so anyway a dot wi has a parity gate at the top so to that parity gate i'll just add a extra one that's all so i'm mean actually i don't need to add this layer over here it is still just a sigma pi. So, now with this and at the top what we get is a pi sigma pi circuit. So, this pi still has fan in 2, this sigma actually will now have fan in m plus 1 okay, because I am adding this extra 1 at the end and how much is the fan in for this pi? This will also have fan in at most m plus 1 because note that k can go all the way up to m and I have this extra x a. Okay, so, this also has fan in m plus 1. Okay. Now, okay. okay. So, this is our d a k. Next, we add another layer. So, we will compute E k okay, for k between 1 up to n, no sorry for k from 0 to m is defined as follows. So, E k is equal to 1 if and only if sigma d a k is equal to 0 for a going from 1 up to n. Okay. So, look at all the a's. Okay. So, for all possible a's, I will look at the parity, how many of those are evaluating to 1 okay. and if that parity is even, then I will set E k to be 1 otherwise 0. Again, this is easy to see how do we get E k. So, our gate for E k will be a parity gate which will take as input D 1 k up to D n k and anything else. Now, again we have to add an extra 1 because this would evaluate to 1 if there are odd number of inputs which are 1, but what we want here is an even. Okay. So, to take care of that, I will just add a extra 1 over here. Okay. This makes it odd. Okay. So, E k will be 1 if there are a even number of d and k's which are evaluating to 0. Okay. So, now we after this what we get is a sigma pi sigma pi circuit here I have 2 here I will have m plus 1 m plus 1 and here I have n plus 1. Okay. And the last thing is at the last level I will define C 1 of x as equal to 1 if and only if 
for all k uh, e k is 1. Okay. So, to get this I will have a AND gate which takes as input. So, e actually is for k equal to 0. So, e 0 up to E m and that is the output of C 1. Okay. So, this gives me i sigma pi sigma pi and uh, so, I will I'll just skip this plus 1. So, this is of the order of something like m n m m n 2 and uh, as I said that if you just apply distributivity over here, you can show that uh, this can be uh, okay, let me just use this space. So, this is pi sigma pi sigma pi m n m m and two, so this is will be sigma pi, where this will be something uh, m cube. Oh, no, one second. Hmm. This will be m cube, and this will be n to the power some um, log. Uh, okay, so, you can figure out the constant, but log to less space. one of n and this pi is n cube ok. So, that is just a calculation that you can figure out, but the point is what is the proof of correctness now ok. So, let us let us see what this thing gives us, why is this giving what we want ok. if or of x 1 to x n equals 0 ok. So, if or of x 1 up to x n is equal to 0, then we know that all the x i's are 0. If all the x i's are 0, let us look at the circuit ok. So, what is each one of these things giving us? Uh, what is d a k? What will be the output of d a k? Hmm? d a k s output will be 0, because each x i is 0 ok. So, therefore, this first predicate itself is false, because the first predicate is false d a k will be 0. If d a k is 0, what will be the value of e k? And note that d a k is 0 for all a k s ok. So, this sigma is always 0. So, what will be e k? e k will be 1 ok. So, for all k s e k will be 1 if for all k is e k will be 1, if for all k e k is 1, what is the output of c 1? Huh? c 1 is 1, because it is the end of all the e i s ok. So, if or of x 1 to x m is equal to 0, then for all k e k is equal to 1, which implies that c 1 of x 1 up to x n will be 1 ok. So, this is actually giving the opposite answer, but that is ok, that is not a problem. I can always add a extra 1 at the end and I can make it uh, the thing, but anyway that is 
that is a minor point. Now let us look at the other direction. If or of x1 up to xn is equal to 1. So, if or of x1 up to xn is equal to 1, then what do we have? We have that there exist s subset of 0, 1 to the power m uh, such that s is not empty first of all and for all i uh, in s x i is 1 ok. So, this is a little bit of abuse of notation. So, when I say i in s I am looking at the binary representation of i in s ok. So, that is essentially ok. So, if or of x i is equal to 1 I know that there are some indices which are 1. So, s is a non empty set and uh, I am looking at exactly those indices which are 1 right. Now, what does Bailey and Vazirani give us? So, according to Bailey and Vazirani what it tells us now is that well if I look at all these d a k's what does it tell us? There is some k for which d a k is equal to 1 or so basically yeah, so for there is some k for which d a k is will be equal to 1 for 1 a because of this ok, because a dot w i will be equal to 0 for all the i's up to k ok. That will happen with probability 1 by 4 yes at most probability uh, at least probability 1 by 4 ok. So, if i is in s then this ok. So, by uh, that was theorem 2 by theorem 2 ok. So, by uh, theorem 2 there the probability that there exist a k which is less than m such that yeah such that uh, not use this notation such that d a k is equal to 1. Uh, for exactly 1 a is at least 1 foot exactly what you said ok. And now because of this what we have is that well d a k will be equal to 1. If d a k is equal to 1 then for exactly 1a which means that this sum will evaluate to 1. If, if this sum evaluates to 1 then E k is equal to 0 and if even 1 E k is equal to 0 then this circuit will evaluate to 0 ok. So, which implies that C 1 of x 1 up to n or the probability not always the probability that c 1 x 1 up to x n is uh, equal to 0 is greater than 1 fourth. So, now you see exactly how we are using Bailey and Vazirani right. We are kind of saying that for exactly 1a ok. So, therefore, for exactly 1a we get this kind of isolation ok. 
and uh, the now the rest of it is just uh, fitting things in place. So, we have a error of 3 4 so we can uh, so first of all we have a error in the answer so we have to flip the answer so to flip the answer we just uh, add a extra one so we define now a circuit p2 Oh, and one more point is that uh, the circuit C1 that we have currently has depth 5. So, but as I said that using the earlier observation, I can bring it down to depth 2. So, I will define C2 to be a depth 2 circuit. Such that what does it do? So, it is taking C1 and uh, it has a parity gate at the top and it is taking one more one and it takes R log n many copies of it. Okay, so this is my C2. Okay. So, therefore, R of x equal to 0 implies C2 of x is equal to 0 and R of x equal to 1 implies that the probability that c2 of x will be 1 is greater than 1 minus or okay probability that c2 x is still 0 is at most 1 over n to the power r okay so, does this complete the lemma? So, we have a uniform, so it is uniform because we have given the construction family of probabilistic depth 2 circuit. Well, once again you can apply that and you can bring down the depth. So, we have a parity gate and ups and gates only of size n to the power polylog. So, we have shown that it is n to the power polylog. So, even after taking log n copies, the size is still n to the power polylog for us it is using order log cube and random bits ok. So, let us see why is it log cube and random bits. So, initially we had the strings w1 up to w m which were random ok. So, that was log square and random bits. Now, I am adding another r log n random bits. So, therefore, it is log cube and random bits that is computing the or function with error at most 1 over n to the power r. Okay. So, this proves the theorem. So, any questions? We should also have a circuit for computing for and it can be for and then we just have copies so we also need to take the over after that. Yeah, or uh, I mean the over can be written as a polynomial and given parity that time. I mean just now there is no output here. Huh, so, the output will be what? So, output will be one second. So, No, so one second, let me see. Well, I cannot have a OR gate over here. Uh, So, what I can do is the following. So, instead of putting this 1 over here, the probability that this is making an error is 3 fourths. So, I have probability that all of them, the probability that all of them makes an error is 3 fourth to the power or log n. So, if I put an AND gate at the top, okay, and I remove all of these, 
So then I get a probability of error as 1 over n to the power r and then after that I flip the input using a parity gate in the end. Okay, so then I will have a, a parity gate which takes this and a 1 as input that will flip the final answer. Hmm. Uh, I mean because so 3 by 4 to the power some constant yeah I mean, I mean see 3 by 4 to the power so if you just keep on multiplying 3 by 4 with itself after some constant times uh, r log n it will come below 1 over n to the power r right. So, 3 fourth is a constant that is less than 1. So, if I multiply it this many times it will fall below 1 over n to the power r. Yeah, I mean, you can call this as r prime to be more precise some r prime times log n it will come below. Depth 2 because I will have a parity and AND gates. So, always we are alternating between parity and uh, AND gate. If I have more than depth 2, I can always apply that uh, note that I had stated earlier and bring it down to only a parity gate at the top and AND gate below it. So, you can do that squashing at the end. So, you do not have to do it over here. You just build the entire thing and then you do the squashing and then you just make it depth 2. You can bring it down, yeah, yeah, you can bring it down, yeah. So, from C2 you can maybe go to another C3 and you can bring it down. So, that is the beauty of using polynomials over GF2, okay. So, that is the reason why, uh, so polynomials over GF2 are used precisely because we can always bring down the depth to uh, 2. But the problem with uh, polynomials over GF2 is with this parity gate and the way parity gate is handled is by Million So, that is that. So, this is basically the crux of this entire thing. Okay. Now, this is for OR gate. So, AND gate is again simple. I am not going to uh, state it. So, you can think of it. So, you just write it as a corollary. So, similarly, AND gate can also be approximated right. Now actually what so what have we done? So, we have just shown how to approximate a OR gate and how to approximate a AND gate, but now a AC, AC 0 circuit can have I mean it has a more complex structure right. So, how do I get a depth let us say a depth 2 circuit or a depth 3 circuit from AC 0. Okay. So, now I think I can erase this. So, this I will just call this as a exercise for you to Again, I mean it is just the standard way of applying De Morgan's and doing it, nothing fancy over here. Okay. Now, uh, what do we want? Yeah, for general circuit. Okay. So, we have lemma 3, we call this as lemma 4. <coughs> so, let L B. Actually, this is also not very difficult, it is quite easy, but let me just state this for the sake of completeness. Let L be accepted by a uniform family of AC0 circuit 
of depth d and let r be a constant then l is accepted by a uniform family of probabilistic circuits of depth to having uh, error at most 1 over n to the power r i is order n to the power log to the power order 1 n and n in order log to the power 4 n how does this work? So, again, the idea is we just do induction on D. Okay. So, if D is equal to 1, we have seen the proof. Now, assume that it is true for uh, up to D, it is true for D minus 1, and now we have a depth D circuit assume that it has uh, AND gate or OR gate, whatever it is, it has an AND gate or OR gate at the top and below it we have already built up this step 2 circuit. Now, using this earlier construction, we can convert it into a sigma pi circuit of whatever suitable depth and now again do the squashing and you get a depth 2 circuit. So, it is the just the standard thing. So, the only thing that would increase as a result is this fan in it goes from log cube n to log to the power 4 n. Of course, the size will also increase, but that is taken care of by this O1 constant over here. I mean, if you really want to understand this uh, uh, in a better way, try to figure out what these constants will be. Okay. So if you actually go through the proof, you can actually compute what that constant will actually be. Okay. So, if you compute, you will get what that constant is. The error is the same because I use the same number of, and I mean I will just keep reusing those random bits for all the gates. Okay. So, those gates are anyway different. So, whatever random bits I have, I will just reuse them. And uh, <coughs> yeah, so fan in log cube n and order log cube n random bits. So, this proves it for AC 0. Now, how to make this deterministic? So, to make this deterministic, so what we have now is the following. So, what we have is all these circuits corresponding to the various choices of random string. So, this is for let us say my random string sum r 1. So, I have x r 1 and so on up to x r um, or the log cube n right. So, 2 to the power order log cube n, these many random strings. So, I will put a majority gate at the top and I will connect them. So, all of them are depth to circuits. Now, because of this majority, 
I get a depth free circuit. And now this is a deterministic computation okay. and as I said that this does not change the size of the okay of course the fan in uh, of this is 2 to the power order log q1 that is okay and as I said the size does not change by more than a quasi polynomial factor. So, that is still okay. Now, there are only two things that are remaining in this entire proof. So, we have shown depth 3, but in the original proof, okay, if you look at the first theorem, I had mentioned threshold circuits. Okay, so, what are threshold circuits? Threshold circuits will have only majority gates. right? Now, what kind of gates does this circuit have? This has majority gates and this has parity gates and AND gates. Now, it is easy to see how we can simulate uh, AND gate using majority gate, right? How do you simulate AND gate using majority gate? You can add constants. So, how many constants and what kind of constants will you add? So, suppose let us look at it as a simple exercise. So, suppose I have n bits, okay. Let us say a 1 up to a n. Now, I want to convert this into a majority. So, of course, it will take a 1 up to a n. Huh? How many more bits? N. Well, n minus 1 more bits. Right. So, I will add how many and, and, and what will those bits be? All zeros. Okay. So, this is n minus 1. So, only if all of them are 1s, then the majority is 1. If the even if one of them is 0, then the majority is not 1. So, it is easy and OR gates can also be converted. But now, the question is how do we convert parity gates to majority gates? Okay. So, that needs a little bit of a trick. So, we will see that next time that is not uh, diff you can also even think about it think of how to do it as an exercise and uh, yeah so you can think about it so that is the that is one part and the other part is of course how do we show Bailey and Vazirani's theorem okay so which we assume so how do we prove that okay so I will stop here Thank you.